Hi, everyone, and welcome to Third Thursday. So this event does include uh, live closed captioning in English, and captions are available directly in the Zoom toolbar by just clicking on the CC icon. So for those of you who haven't been to a Third Thursday event before, my name is Michelle, and I coordinate events for Algonquin College. And welcome back to those who have previously attended a Third Thursday event. So for those of you who don't know, Third Thursday is a cross-college collaboration. On the third Thursday of every month, we bring in local innovators, speakers, entrepreneurs, and creatives to you so we can learn from one another. For the 2021 winter term, we've decided to put a little spin on our traditional third Thursday programming. So recognizing that we are in the midst of a very challenging time, especially for small businesses, we have decided that we are going to refocus third Thursday and every month this semester, we are going to use the theme explore and explore a new neighborhood across the city and highlight a few different small businesses. So this month we explored Manatech and we chose three incredible businesses to join us today. So we're going to learn a little bit about their businesses and chat about the power of community. So before we get started, we are going to play a video that shares a little bit back, a little bit of background on Third Thursday and um, that features the three panel members. So Ryan, can you please roll the clip? Hey, Algonquin College, we're launching the third season of Third Thursday. What's Third Thursday? Third Thursdays are conversations that spark ideas and create community. Every month, we invite local experts and innovators to share stories that inspire and empower listeners. This year, in our virtual edition, we challenge you to tune in on the third Thursday of every month. In a new location, in your home. We challenge you to change your space into a place. And we'll bring inspiring innovators from inspiring places to you, virtually. Let's explore this new reality together. Students, employees, alumni, and community partners. Forge meaningful connections while learning from each other. The Third Thursday community is story-driven. Curious and collaborative. And we're not afraid of perspective shifts. Or pushing the envelope. We skip the small talk. And dig deep into topics that matter. We're here to fuel dreams through dialogue and to turn passion into purpose. Come and be a part of the story. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, so now to kick off today's event, we'd like to ask everyone to open up the chat tab along the bottom of your screen. And you can, um, if you select two, then you can do a drop down and select panelists and attendees. Otherwise it might just come to panelists. So you could do drop down and panelists and attendees. And then I'm going to ask that everyone type out um, your answer to this question. And the question is, what does community mean to you? So don't press send. We'll just give everyone a few seconds and then we're all going to send our answers at the same time. So again, the question is, what does community mean to you? Okay, so I'm going to count down from three and then we'll all press send. So three, two, one, go. Awesome, perfect togetherness, inspiration, collaboration, teamwork, support. Perfect. These are great answers, supporting a group, coming together. Thank you for answering that. And I think we're going to be talking about some of those themes today when we open it up to our panel. So we are welcome to continue to use the chat, communicate with the community. Or if you have a question for one of our panel members, we ask that you open up the Q&A tab along the bottom of your screen, and then you can submit your question there. And today's moderator, Sophia Boris, will read it out loud on your behalf. So now I'm going to turn the virtual stage over to Sophia, who will be moderating the session and introducing our panelists. Thanks, Michelle. I am so excited for today's uh, Third Thursday. I love Third Thursdays, but this one specifically, because it's all about Manatech. And I grew up in Manatech, so I know firsthand what kind of community it brings together, all the cool little features that only if you live there, you really know about, but then people come in and they fall in love with this cute little town and, and they don't want to leave. So I am super excited to, we have three, to introduce our three, our main panel members today. And 
they each have kind of their own unique kind of twist to how, what they bring um, to the Manatee Village. Some have been there longer than others. And I think it's been really cool to see how Manatee has really transformed over the years. When I was there, you know, I saw cows on my way to high school. And now when I, I, I drive into the village, it's just populated with these amazing, unique businesses that bring this like flavor and like flair that I haven't really seen in a, in a kind of a small town feel with big dreams kind of mentality. So I want to first kind of give you a taste of who our panel members are. So today we're just going to have some fun. We're going to chat. We're going to you know, talk about what's going on, what the future looks like, and uh, what these businesses had, have, had had up against them this last couple of months. So let's start with uh, Michelle from Rebel Pedal. Do you want to give us a quick overview? Uh, hi. Um, so uh, we have been here at Rebel Pedal for we're going into our seventh year. Um, we have actually quadrupled our square footage um, on the on February the 1st of last year um, because that's what you want to do is take on more space just before a pandemic. <laughs> um, we actually decided in March when the initial lockdown happened that we would um, keep our doors closed. And so we have been operating as a flower shop um, without any uh, clients coming in the store for almost an entire year now. Uh, our business online and over the phone um, and, and selling on the sidewalk um, has, has definitely um, you know, created some interesting uh, conversations over the last year for sure. Cool. And if anyone hasn't been to Rebel Pedal, you need to go. I've been going for years and let me tell you, Michelle has a spin for design. So awesome. Welcome, Michelle. Thank and you. then 692 Bar, Charlie, you're new yeah. to Manatech. Yes, I am. I'm, uh, I'm the resident American. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, but don't hold that against me. I, um, I met my wife uh, in South Korea teaching English and, uh, and I got her pregnant and um, moved, <laughs> moved to Canada um, where uh, free healthcare reigns. It's great. Um, we, uh, my wife and I, as well as two of our partners, uh, started a business uh, here in Manatee uh, Coffee Shop, and um, you know we we do everything from the financing, the, the marketing, um, to making the coffees, making the food, mopping the floors, cleaning the toilets. We do everything. Um, we're owner operated, and uh, you know we've been we've been struggling um, during this time, but we've also grown as a team. Um, exponentially and, and, and gotten so much closer and, and uh, it, it's been positive in a lot of ways. Cool. And Gina from Lasting Impressions, a little bit about yourself and then we'll jump right into it. Hey, hi everyone. Um, we're Lasting Impressions and I've owned this store actually, I just realized this morning, this is our 15th year in business, which is incredible. Um, when I think back to what happened last March, uh, the first week after we shut down, I actually considered closing the business. I did absolutely nothing for, the, for that week. And then after that, we decided we were going to survive. So we started looking at ways to do that. And one of them was changing our technology and upgrading our website. So we have done that. And that has helped us survive this last year, as well as all the support from wonderful customers. I think you make a really good point there. I think, and we can start with that, Gina. Um, a, lot, a lot of entrepreneurs or small businesses, I think, you know, when the lockdown first happened, we're unsure what to do, right? And, and how to survive and come back from that. And I think, I don't know, do you guys want to talk about how, how did you transform your business? Like, how did you, I mean, that word pivot that everyone says a million times. I mean, it's been, I'm sure, a roller coaster. How has it unfolded for you guys? Uh, well, I know for us, um, pivot is a very fancy word for um, feeling like you're drowning in the ocean, holding onto a life preserver in a in a perfect storm. Uh, honestly, it it feels more desperate than how pivot actually is described. But um, Charlie is right. There is such an invincibility that I think all of us business owners who have been able to work through this. Um, you know, I can handle anything now. There's this mm -hmm. whole year has been, I keep saying the world is broken and supply chains are, um, you know, not normal. And for a while in March, we decided to continue operating because 
we have online and we have over the phone and we have a delivery service and we have a hot pink pickup table up front as well. And so we just figured if you could order a pizza for takeout, you could order flowers and we could do that. Um, and, and honestly, the stories that we heard from, you know, bringing the, the cheer and the ment and helping people's mental wellness, um, you know, we were in tears over some of these stories. It was unbelievable. Um, and definitely that was a weird time because the world wasn't sh shipping flowers. Um, and we had Easter and Mother's Day and we had some orders. So it was great to use Canadian product, but Canada isn't really known for being a major flower distributor. <laughs> so, you know, there were a lot of things and I, I'm sure Charlie and Gina have found as well with their supply chain you know, you would order things and expect them and they wouldn't show up or half of it would show up or the wrong colors would show up or it just would be gone or, you know, it would supposed to be here in a day, it would be here in four days, you know, everything, the whole world is definitely broken for any of us who can continue to operate for sure. And go ahead, Charlie. Oh, I was just gonna agree with, um, agree with Michelle that everything, everything has been challenging. There hasn't been anything easy. Um, and, you know, rolling with the punches just seems like a never ending battle. Um, but at the same time, you know, having the mentality that well, we really don't have any other choice but to make it, you know, um, we have nine kids between the four owners here. Um, and that's a lot of mouths to feed. Um, so you just got to you know, dig your heels in and say, fuck it, we're going to make it and, and, and do it. Yeah. And well, and that's just it, right? Like what other choice is there, right? At, at this point, it's get it done. And I think what's been the customer kind of response? Like I know Michelle, you were saying like, you didn't always get the right orders. Or, are people, are they like, okay, whatever. I got purple rather than pink. Like who cares? Um, it's interesting. There's certainly a huge amount of our customers who are just awesome human beings that are like, whatever, as long as it's pretty. And that's, yeah. you know, kind of how we roll. Um, but there are definitely some people who this hasn't affected them very much. You know, they're maybe not getting dressed and putting on makeup and going to work driving in their car. And so maybe their world hasn't been greatly affected. But, you know, I'm part of the wedding industry and the event industry that I mean, I know business owners who are selling their homes. I know business owners who have not had any sales in almost a year. Um, you know, there is definitely a desperation side to our, uh, you know, to this economy for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. And then what would you say would be like the most creative thing you've had to do to, I don't know, to, to get the attention of your customers? Um, honestly, we, we have had so much support it's been unbelievable um really even just um taking photographs uh, creates such a great conversation and and putting them on social and and instagram and facebook and there have been so many late night conversations with people i don't know who are just reaching out to you know cheer us on and i'm sure you know charlie and gina have had the same experience there have been people i don't know who know me through social that have reached out just, you know, to give a virtual hug. Um, and, and that has been just an amazing part of this whole uh, experience. Yeah, we found that too, that people are, would either email us or call us and say, I want you to be here when this is over. So I'm gonna yeah. support you, I'm gonna buy this from you, even though they could buy it somewhere else, we're buying it from you for that reason. Yeah, and that's amazing. That was definitely something odd uh, for us to kind of have to pivot to um, during this, uh, doing online shopping for a coffee shop um, <laughs> just seems like a weird combination, but we were just looking for any possible alternative revenue stream that we could, we could, you know, think up. And uh, we did, we ended up creating a Shopify site. We ended up putting a whole bunch of our um, retail items on there, but we also ended up doing charcuterie to go and and bread uh, to go and all these different things that we would never have done if the pandemic had you know, not occurred. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point is that although business as we know it was amazing, 
you know, there is a different outlook of, okay, obviously a lot of struggle that went along with that, but there is something cool about you're doing business differently moving forward. Like, do you guys think you'll ever go back to the way you did things or will it be changed forever? I think it's changed forever for us. Yeah. yeah I, don't think I, think, I think certain aspects for sure have uh, changed forever, but um, I think, uh, I think some things will go back to normal. I hope, you know, in, in, um, in-store dining, I hope goes back. You know, we didn't, we didn't build a beautiful coffee shop for people to, you know, leave <laughs> um, to people for people to go. So I, I want people back. I want the, the bustle, the hustle uh, to, be, to be back in, in the shop. Um, but, you know, when we started, we, we had 14 staff, um, which was insane to think about now because uh, now it's just the four owners and we have a couple people on the weekends to, to help in the kitchen. Um, but we're making it work with four of us. And it's just crazy to think that we were kind of bloated on the, on the um, labor side. Um, but that was a positive thing to come out of this was, you know, saving on labor. Yeah. And Michelle, you're kind of doing the same thing, right? Yeah, we've laid off our staff. Um, and we have a unique situation. My partner, Gary, and I, we live together. Um, I have two university sons who are home with me and uh, we can <laughs> abuse them uh, and make them work for food. And um, so, you know, it's, it's definitely unique in that it's just the four of us uh, keeping this together right now. Um, we did have our staff back, obviously, over the Christmas time. Um, January, February, and March are historically quieter times in our industry. Um, and usually we do lots of event work or weddings at this time. But, um, you know, with the pandemic, there's definitely none of that going on. Um, funerals have started coming back. We have a couple of funerals actually uh, this weekend. Um, it's not like it normally would be because a lot of families are waiting to celebrate people's lives who have passed until after they can all gather together. Um, but, you know, between now, certainly we're overworked, but, um, you know, this is all part of, you know, the desperation of keeping your business thriving through this pandemic. Yeah. And if you have to get that phone, you get that phone, Michelle. No, Gary just walked in. I <laughs> okay. wasn't alone, but Gary's just walked in so he can get it. <laughs> we chatted about her doing it all. <laughs> and Gina, do you, like, what's it like the community feel in Manitic? I know that I, like, I, I'm a biased opinion. I love it there, but I mean, from all the businesses that are there right now, are, are you guys seeing each other in the, on the sidewalk? And like, like what, what's happening? What's the feel? How are you supporting each other? Um, not seeing each other in person, not happening. That hasn't happened for a while. I mean, when we're here, all of us, we're working. Yeah. And we're there, that's what we do our whole time here is work and then we head home. So yeah. we don't get to see each other or talk to each other. Is there, but is there a cheer factor where you're just like helping each other out from the sidelines where it's like? Oh, know? absolutely. If somebody's looking for coffee, we send them to 692. They want flowers, you go to Rebel Petal. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I think there's a lot of that for sure. But if there's, you know, I think a lot of that's migrated even more so to the social media side um, uh, than what it was before. Um, so there's a lot of virtual uh, community building going on. Yeah. And, and how does that play in? You guys, like Gina was saying, like you're going home, you're working, um, and that's kind of your lifestyle right now. What about your mental health? Like, what, what are you doing? I know, really, I was mentioning before, I saw that you guys are doing some crazy stuff. You have to tell everybody about it. Um, oh, yeah, the Wim Hof. Cold water. <laughs> yeah, Wim Hof method. So, a um, little short plug for the Wim Hof method. Uh, we, um, my wife and I signed up for a, a course to, uh, study the Wim Hof method, which is essentially three pillars, with, um, one of which is cold water immersion. Um, another one is breath work and, and focus. Um, but yeah, we every day since November 1st, we've been going in the river um, for between two and 15 minutes uh, a day. And uh, it's, it's changed our lives for the better. And it's, it's been really good for mental health. Um, with that being said, mental health has been an absolute gong show um for for me especially um for what i can say for myself but you know for everybody here um i'm really thankful for the community that we have in manatic that has been conscious of the the struggles that all of this have been going through um 
but uh, yeah, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's been really hard. Um, yeah. All of this. We noticed, we noticed that very early on um, because we, in March, April, May, were operating and, and talking to people on the phone. I kept saying, we're all not okay. Um, you know, just things, uh, how people would normally order flowers, um, you know, they would have all the address, the phone numbers, the credit card, all the things just right there because they're about to give us an order. We're, we're more scattered. We are not as, you know, on it as we used to be. Um, and collectively, I know, you know, we're all scared, anxious and worn down. Um, and I don't go into a freezing cold river um, <laughs> for my <laughs> mental health. Um, but, you know, I have, a, I have a screened in room that I have a heater in. And yes, there have been some days when it's been five or six degrees. And even just, you know, the fresh air of a screened in porch on my house is, you know, therapy to me. But I have to say that, you know, I, I, it's so stressful even just moving around in our world. You know, I have drivers who are out and, and they have people who are afraid to open the door because, you know, but there's a delivery of flowers and we can't leave them outside like we did before. You know, in the spring and summer, it was beautiful to watch the people here. We have a main street location and on our table, we would set all the flowers out and we have people by every day who would just come and look at all the flowers and see what we were putting out that day for pickup. And it was, you could just see that, you know, it was helping so much. We were giving away, we have a little item here, a rebel cup, and they're just little arrangements with fresh flowers in them. And we were giving them to the black dog about eight a weekend or so, and they would give them away to just random people who were picking up or um, picking up takeout. And to hear some of those even answering machine messages, um, you know, how it just brought so much light into their, to their lives and how it was an unexpected, you know, treat for them. Um, you know, it's been amazing to be part of that, you know, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I could see that you're seeing the return of the investment there, you know, where they're like, you were mentioning before this woman had been alone. And that was like, that was the, the spark of her day because she had a delivery and it, it just brought her a lot of joy, which is, I think, really needed right now for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. I, I find like, would you, would you say like, what would be... What's your driving force right now? Obviously business is like, yes, you want your business to succeed. Yes, you want it to go back to, to what it used to be. But what gets you out of bed every day? Like before we'd always say, oh, I have a passion for what I do. I love what I do. Like wh what is that? What's, what's getting you out of bed these days to like just keep going and, and get through until we have the vaccine and, and life comes to a, a new normal? So for, for me personally, and I, I know for my partners as well, um, we've had this chat so many times because there's been so many changes to protocols, so many changes, you know, with regards to whether or not we're in lockdown or whatever. And, and our, our conversation always comes back to what are, why are we reopening or why are we changing our hours? Why are we maintaining, you know, being open in general um, during a lockdown? And it always comes back to being there for the people that have, continue to come to us for support. Um, and when I say for support, I, I, I say that because, you know, people come in here for a meaningful interaction, um, not just for coffee, but for um, camaraderie, for, there's a lot of loneliness, right? We're, I'm lucky in that I have a loving family at home, my wife, I have three kids, but there's a lot of people that are really, really lonely right now. Um, and sometimes we're the only people they see in a day that have a meaningful reaction. Uh, um, uh, you know, they, that's the only time that they're able to talk to someone. And, and that means a lot for us to be that for those people out there. Um, so, yeah. 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 And do you think that translates well online as well? Like, I know, like, like Charlie gets to see people come in, right? It's like a take it kind of um, venture right now. But like Gina... And Michelle, you don't you don't really have anybody in your shop, right? It really is online. How do you how do you sustain those connections online? I interact a lot with the customers by phone and by email. So, for example, with Shopify, an email is sent out to thank customers for a purchase that they made. They'll usually send us an email to thank us for allowing us to shop. But I will always answer those emails and just say hi, how are you? Just to stay in touch. 
Um, I do a lot of the deliveries myself. Um, and if it's a delivery going to the person that purchased it, I take that time to make sure I say, hello, how are you? And they, they usually thank us for the order. I'm trying to do um, everything I can to connect with customers wherever we can. For sure, we're missing out on the fact that they can't come in. They used to love to, customers would love going through the store, seeing the displays, looking how we curate the products. All of that is gone right now. And it's challenging to try to recreate that uh, online and to yeah. maintain that relationship with customers for sure. But it seems to be, it, it's working right now with what we what we have. And you just got a shout out in the, in the chat. They said your social media is really good. So <laughs> you're doing something right there. And I, I really like what you said about phone calls because I think there is this like Zoom exhaustion, right? Like I, for me, I'm on a computer all day, every day. And before it was all in person. I'm an event planner. So I like the fact that you said you pick up the phone because I feel like that is the hidden treasure right now where you have that like connection via voice that, you know, was long dead. No one called anyone anymore. And I think it might be coming back. So yeah. And I call them from home. The customers will call the store. We're not here every day, given the lockdown, but yeah. we monitor the calls and I call them from home to see what, yeah. what they're looking for and help them out. And what about I, I'm, still, I'm still new to Zoom. This is my fourth Zoom call. <laughs> so, hey, you're doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, okay, good, thanks. I hope everything is fine. Um, but yeah, we don't, yeah, in our industry, we're here making things. So um, we're not usually holding meetings um, I've spoken to a few brides, uh, but it's mostly been over the phone. And, um, you know, most of the weddings have uh, definitely been delayed. We've had a few that actually happened this year, but they were actually all organized over email. I never spoke to the brides once on the phone. Um, so, you know, there's been a lot of trust, which is awesome. We find, um, you know, we've started doing more videos on our social media, on Instagram and things like that. And I have started, you know, I just am now going to start doing videos of things that we have happening here every day that are normal, boring things to us that we don't even think people would be excited by. So, you know, later on, I'm going to do an orchid, you know, how to look after orchid plants, um, you know, video and social media. I cannot imagine being through this pandemic without social media right now. I think it has kept a connection with us all. Um, you know, and, and if someone is, uh, you know, even just sending a little messages, are you okay? You know, I miss you, love you, things like that to clients and friends. Um, it would be different if we didn't have, you know, social media to, to help our hearts, I think. Yeah, hundred percent. And you're letting people into your homes and, and behind the scenes, as you said, now as before, it was more polished and professional and a little bit different. And I think that, you know, everybody has like, we're looking at you guys right now and, and like, you're. It's, it's not set up for, you know, what your everyday life would normally be if you're in the shop. It, it's, it's just real life. And like, you know, and, and for us, for uh, Algonquin, we work at, you see into someone's living room and you just get a little bit, I kind of like it though. I don't know if you guys um, feel this way about the connection piece, but what you say with social is that I normally wouldn't see my colleague's living room, right? So I think you, you get a sense of like, about their style and you know where they live and all these little details that you normally wouldn't find. And I think through social that you guys are using to connect with your employees, that is a powerful tool. It is behind the scenes, the storytelling, the visual component. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so we have a question from Richard Lee and it's, it's I, I like it because I think it will, um, it'll generate our whole community kind of feel. And it's, uh, do you find customers are surprised you are open and how you are selling now? Um, how do you create awareness in local chat? So we, we talked about social. Do you think customers are surprised or open now? Or I think that would be part of the expectation to continue. Yeah, I think initially, you know, back in the first lockdown between March and May, I think clients were very surprised that we were open. Uh, you know, we certainly let them know through social that we were here. Um, I think I haven't had, oh, good, I'm glad you're there. Like, I haven't heard that kind of a conversation starter on the phone with clients um, in this recent lockdown. I think a lot of people are assuming, I know over the summer and in the fall when other businesses were comfortable having retail clients through the store, I know a lot of people were disappointed we weren't open, but, you know, we felt comfortable with our health in making our bubble very small and we're unique and can do that. Um, and so that's, you know, what we chose to do. I know there were a few disappointed people who didn't understand why we would make that choice, but that's how we feel safe 
in creating beautiful things. Like we're creative. I have to have a fairly normal headspace. <laughs> Or not, I guess. But, <laughs> I <yeah>. didn't say it. <laughs> I know, but the look on your face, you're like, okay, Michelle. <laughs> you know, I think, there's only think, so much anxiety I can take, and, and then I become yeah. a crazy person. <laughs> I think, you know, the question, are people surprised we are open? Um, it's been so different throughout this whole time, um, you know, the attitude or the feeling around COVID, um, right? In the beginning, it was, it was very, very drastic, very um, scary. I think everyone took it extremely seriously and we shut down completely. Um, and, and then and then things started to ease up. It seemed like in the summer and it seemed like things were kind of kind of ish returning to normal. Um, so people weren't surprised that we had begun to reopen. Um, but then when this lockdown hit again, um, we decided to stay open, but try and manage the demand in weird ways by only opening for certain hours and whatnot. So people have been a little bit surprised that we're open, but um, I think we've just decided during this particular time to stay open, to maintain our, our community presence, if you will. I mean, we're not making any money right now, right? Yeah. Um, nobody's out. As Michelle was saying earlier, um, this is a historic time um, for a uh, slow business, January, February, March. Um, and it's been exacerbated by the fact um, of the lockdown and especially because kids aren't back in school. So parents aren't going out. Yeah. Um, so, and, and our kids are at home, which is batshit crazy. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been interesting for sure. Yeah. Yeah. For us, no, people aren't surprised we're open this time, but sure. Last year, the first time, the first lockdown, yeah. They, when we did reopen, we would get calls and emails. Are you open? Are you, are you doing business? But this time it seems to be more accepting of the fact that businesses are doing curbside. But we still push on social media to make sure people know that, yeah. that they have that message uh, that we are open for business by curbside. And I think it's shifted now where the consumer, and I'm like, I'm no expert, but box stores used to be, you know, where people would go. And like mm -hmm. you see in like populated areas at Barhaven, like you don't have to leave Barhaven, you just go to all the big box stores. And, and now there's such a focus. Um, on local and I think it's a really cool beautiful thing where it's like help my community um I see it in my community where I live now and it's just like it's awesome and it's just again it's it's brought exposure to local businesses so in hopes that the future that will be a lasting effect um and an, an, and will obviously drive business for you moving forward is the hope yeah, I hope so I certainly people responded to that message last year to shop local November December were great months uh, for us and it was all about people wanting to support local. I'm seeing it continue this year, although it's slower, of course, being January, um, yeah. but people still want to do that. They're telling us, I don't want to shop at Walmart. I don't want to go to Amazon. I want you to be here. Um, and there's not just our business, but all of the, the restaurants and the other businesses in Manatech as well. Yeah. Okay, for our last 10 minutes, I want to shift gears. We don't want to talk about the pandemic anymore because I want to see you guys flourish and grow and be amazing. And I want to, talk a little bit about creativity and then stuff that's in your shop. So there's a question here and it's perfect at this point is how do you stay creative inspired? So what are you doing to, uh, to come up with new stuff for the next couple of months? Or plan? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to take that one first? <laughs> well, in our case, a lot of our suppliers are sending us information. They're posting about spring and summer products and Christmas. We're in the middle of buying for Christmas right now for 2021. Okay. So we see a lot of inspiration from um, our suppliers. Um, also, just to go, I check on social media to see what the trends are, what's happening. Customers will let us know what's interesting to them. Yeah. As, so that's where we get some of our inspiration. Michelle, I'm curious, what's yeah. trending maybe for, uh, for weddings that are potentially happening in the near future? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, I, I, okay, so I don't know because I stay away from the trends. I want a bouquet that I made 20 years ago to be able to be posted today and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go find one for you so if we can tag you in it. Perfect. But like I want a bouquet 20 years ago to look as gorgeous today. 
So, you know, certainly there are trends that we've noticed in the past, but I don't want to put peacock feathers into a bridal bouquet because 20 years from now, that wedding bouquet needs to look gorgeous and timeless. So, you know, the wedding industry, I tend to not pay attention to um, any of the trends. Uh, and I always, you know, stay away from trendy things. Um, honestly, I work in a big, stupid, stressful fucking rainbow. So I am inspired every day. Like we get, you know, we had an orchid shipment in from Singapore and Thailand and Vietnam yesterday. There's, you know, all kinds of gorgeous stuff that we have here. It's breathtaking. We have miniature daffodils coming. When I unbox that, I can smell the dirt. Like that kind of uh, thing makes me fired up for yeah. sure. This is, this is very easy. I just need to make sure that we are healthy and well rested and our bodies are okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes after a day here, I just go home and crawl into bed and watch videos of penguins and puppies because that's, <laughs> you know, how I need to keep <laughs> my mental health. Just, you know, something to smile for a few hours until I fall asleep. But, yeah. you know, those are things that it's easy to be inspired here. It's, you know, it's a big, beautiful rainbow. Yeah, you have a great workspace. I think in terms of uh, business creativity, um, there's kind of a difference between like when things are operating normal, uh, normally, uh, there's a create, there's almost like a, a fun, organic creativity that comes from having a coffee shop and the different the different kinds of drinks we can make or different food that we can um, we can come up with and serve. Uh, right now, I find that our creativity is more um, like survival based <laughs> um, and, yeah. and not necessarily as fun creative, but more like how can we build our online presence so that we're able to have to-go items, even though we're not a to-go coffee shop. Um, so there's there's things like that that it's more it's more necessity based. What would be Charlie the thing in your store right now in your shop right now that is unique that you want to tell people about? Like I know that charcuterie boards are really cool. Like I think that people are obviously dining at home right now, right? So to kind of yes. have that like restaurant experience is nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we uh, that's one of the things we pivoted to online for. Uh, takeout was the our charcuterie boards to go so we do those on the weekends um, for two or for four people um, we're looking at adding another item um, for takeout like for ordering ahead um, which would be like a uh, like a Saturday or Sunday morning quiche um, on our uh, on sourdough crust that we make um, in-house here uh, so we're, we're, we're trying to expand our creativity in that way but uh uh, it's always it's always a challenge. Yeah. Well, someone says your scones are amazing. I need to try the scones. <laughs> They're very amazing. Oh yeah. I feel like that's Thank dangerous. You. And then Gina, do you have do you have a funny story that came from all of this from the pandemic? Is there something that you were like, oh my gosh? There's a question here saying there's got to be a funny story from one of you as a result of the pandemic. I don't know how funny it is, but. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I blocked a lot of that out. I, I <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's there's been there's been a level of desperation in my body that I've never experienced before um and so what I find interesting is that we have amazing conversations on the sidewalk with clients who are or or people who aren't clients just manatee walkers um who you know have brought me to tears um there have been, you know, funny, goofy things that Gary and I have shared together trying to figure this all out. Like, it fucking snowed on Mother's Day. <laughs> and like, uh, like mm -hmm. we couldn't have been working any harder. We had no flowers from all around the world. We couldn't get certain things. We couldn't, you know, and I'm friends with Elizabeth at Flowers Talk and we're constantly talking back and forth every week. Um, like, of all the <laughs> freaking things to have to try and overcome, okay, it couldn't have been harder and then it snowed. So now we're dealing with this, like we, you know, at this time of year, we have a big fat juicy roll of foam that we usually wrap things with. But at Mother's Day, we didn't have 
we weren't prepared for snow. So anyway, it's just, it's been, there's been a level of desperation, I think, through everyone who has been trying to operate through this. You know, really, after this pandemic is over, all of us business owners will have a great big Superman chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think one of the ways that we've decided to stay sane and, and like a funny story or whatnot was, uh, you know, with, with social media, we just, you know, if, if we're facing some kind of weird existential new order from, you know, the government or whatnot, we'll put out a, a TikTok or something like that. And it's just, just completely fucking random and, and stupid. It has no, no, you know, no advertising for the company or, or whatnot. It's just, just us being goofballs. Just fun. Yeah. yeah. And I think, well, that's exactly like watching the penguins. There's something about this lightheartedness that we all kind of need because it's otherwise crazy every day. So um, exactly. that's good. Uh, well, thank you all. This was, I think it's just nice to see from all the different businesses, a reality, right? And, and it's not so much about talking about the doom and gloom because there is so much hope with the three businesses here and creativity inspiration. I think, I think we all grab that from here, but also a realistic view and insight in, into the lines of like your actual every day. And Michelle, you said something at the very last point where I think it could resonate amongst all of us is that you're friends with another florist. And oh, sorry, yeah, it, yeah. it just kind of came to me because yeah. I thought to myself, it used to be in business owner like land that everyone's your competitor. And mm -hmm. I, I think, um, again, just wrapping it all to the power of community, like that is so powerful that you could be competitors, but you're in it together. And I'm sure yeah. Charlie and Gina, you guys have similar you know, situations. And I think that just speaks to that. There is mm -hmm. enough money for everybody if you're willing to work hard. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, 100%. And to 100%. cheer each other on and build each other yeah. up. And oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, I know some amazing business owners, a lot of them women who we've all just sent each other little things. And when I was ready to give up, then, you know, Jenny, who owns Bamboo Restaurant, said something to me and I'm like, all right, girl, I, I'm in for another day. And so, you know, like just things like that, you need to have those sort of people who, you know, some days it was me cheering them on. So yeah, it's been, honestly, it's been an amazing uh, year to live through for all different reasons. Well, I'm excited for everything to open back up and I'm going to come to each of your stores and, and shop and buy all the things, the flowers, the coffee, <laughs> the scones, the, the anything at Lasting Impressions. I love your store, Gina. I honestly, we were looking online and we were like, I just wish something was closer to me like that, that I could just go and pick it up and, and enjoy it with my family. So thank you very, very much for coming. I will hand it over to Michelle, but I can't thank you guys enough. It was, it was really nice to chat with you guys today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Sophia. And thank you, Charlie, Gina, and Michelle. And um, that was awesome. And all the comments, like I definitely recommend reading those because there's so many great messages in there. So now we do have the giveaway. So we have three $75 gift cards to each of your businesses. So um, we've added everyone who registered to this uh, spinning wheel. We're just doing the draw at random but you have to be online to be able to win. So we might, cause it looks like we've lost a couple. Um, so Ryan, I'll get you to share your screen and then we'll do the first draw. So this is going to be for, I will do Rebel Pedal first. So $75 gift card to Rebel Pedal and then I'll contact. <laughs> awesome okay perfect now the next 75 oh and i did see megan on so i'm just um, assuming she's still on um i will double check that after actually though okay then the next gift card we have a 75 dollars gift card to lasting impressions gifts awesome thanks megan i see her there Okay, Stephanie, Stephanie. Yeah, okay, she's online. And then the last one is for 692, $75. OK, 
Okay, I don't see a Jason online. Um, unless you're signed in on a different account, I'll just give it a second and then Ryan will get you to, we'll do one more because it doesn't look like for 692, please. George. Okay. And we see a George is online. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Awesome. Okay. So I'll contact the three winners um, by email, the email that you registered with, and then um, send you the e-gift cards. So now this is where we open up the floor to the community soapbox for if this is, if this is your first time joining a third Thursday event, this is where we invite you to our community to share something. Maybe it's a shout out to another local business. Um, or it's something that you're working on. If you're, if you have a side hustle, um, you can just raise your hand and then I will click allow to talk and then you'll be able to speak and share. You'll have about a minute or 30 seconds, however long you want to share something with the attendees who are on right now. So you can just raise your hand or mention something in the chat and then I can allow you to talk. So I know I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but I know there are a couple other small business owners um, who are tuning in or um, maybe work with another shop in Manatee. Like Anu, I think you you commented saying that you're um, with another business in Manatee. If you want to give a shout out to that business, I'm not sure. Or if anyone else you can just raise your hand or write in the chat. Okay, so Anu, I just um, gave you permission to speak. So you should be able to now. Okay, I'm not sure if that worked. Um, okay, well, if there's nothing else or if anyone wants to share anything that's going on. Um, I definitely recommend checking out the our three businesses, the Lasting Impression 692 and Rebel Pedal, the social media and the websites. Everything was added to the chat. Um, so definitely give those companies a follow and um, check. Oh, thank you. Bonnie just added everything. Perfect. And thank you everyone for joining us today. It was so great to connect and um, to join this conversation. We do host these Third Thursday events every month. So our next Third Thursday is on Thursday, February 18th, and we are exploring Hintonburg. So you can check out the Algonquin College Student Services um, events calendar for details coming soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.